sharing your talents with us. I was Matthew chapter one. I was uh, I, remember, I remember thinking, what are we going to do when JT and Mildred no longer uh -huh. can come back? And God just is so good to to send us wonderful singers uh, year after year. Yeah. We thank God for you. Matthew chapter number one. If you brought a cell phone with you, please make sure that the sound has been turned off on your cell phone. Because the devil will make sure you get a phone call while I'm preaching. And you'll be embarrassed. We don't want you to be embarrassed. And that thing goes off. Nobody intends for that to happen, right? It just does. So make sure that is off. Matthew chapter number, I said one is two. Matthew chapter two, I'm sorry. Beginning in verse one. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Notice that. When he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. When you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And he's a liar. When they heard when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. When they were come to the house, into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh, being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there till I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. I was riding somewhere in town and I saw a sign in front of a church that said, wise men still seek him. And uh, I thought, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a message using that for my title, Wise Men Still Seek Him. I want to invite you to pray with me and for me and pray for yourself that God will give you understanding as well as we, uh, as we seek to preach this morning. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before thy throne of grace, once again we come Lord, seeking grace to help in our time of need. Again, Lord, I'm ever mindful that you said without me you can do nothing. So, Lord, I'm laying myself bare before you, asking you to fill me and enable me to preach your word with power and passion. 
Lord, we pray for each one here this morning that you would give them understanding. And Lord, again, we pray for those here today never been born again, that they might realize their need and trust you even today. And Lord, we'll be grateful. Now we want to also ask you, Lord, for Nathan, God, that you protect him uh, as he serves. And all of our men and women, Lord, serving around the world, we pray for thy hand of protection upon them. We'll be so grateful for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wise men still seek him. In our text this morning, we have contrasted before us two very different types of men. And of course, these are not fictitious characters or events. First of all, there were those whom the Lord referred to as wise men. And uh, wise they were for a number of different reasons, which we'll look at more closely in just a few moments. And then there was King Herod, a wicked, murderous, self-absorbed narcissist of a human being, consumed with a lust for power and prestige. King Herod was a poster boy for a fool. He traded the joy and blessing of a relationship with God for a few short years of power and pleasure. Uh, he died not long after the birth of uh, Jesus Christ. And now for some 2,000 plus years, uh, he has been roasting in the charred regions of the damned in a place the Bible calls hell. Wise men still seek him, but fools still despise him. There is no middle ground. We're either among the wise or we're among the foolish. I purposed in my heart that I'm going to seek him diligently every day of my life. The Bible solemnly warns us in Isaiah chapter 55 to quote, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. The fact is, all we have is now, this very moment in which we live. Uh, the Bible says we're not promising tomorrow. That's why the Bible says that behold, today is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Let me ask you a question. I, and I have a close friend back home that I've spoken of numerous times over the years. We've been, we've been buddies since we were 12, 13 years old. He's still lost. And I asked him uh, the other day, I said, uh, Earl, would you ever consider playing Russian roulette? Y'all know what Russian roulette is? Everybody knows what that is, right? The Russians, I guess they give them a bottle of vodka and they start doing strange things like putting, putting one bullet in a cylinder and, and, and spinning that thing and then sticking it to their head and pulling the trigger. Now, I would never even consider uh, playing Russian roulette. And most people would not either. However, there are millions of people who play Russian roulette with eternity every single day of their lives. They know they're not ready to meet God. They know they're not prepared to meet God. But they gamble that they'll be alive tomorrow. They'll be alive the next day. There'll be another opportunity uh, to get saved. Every day they gamble on their lives by refusing to seek the Lord while He may be found. I submit to you that wise men still seek him yes. while fools still reject him every day to their own peril. Let's begin with number, the, number one, the wise men, and see what we can learn about them. Who were they? Uh, verse one tells us that they were wise men from the east. That word wise from the Greek word magos, M-A-G-O-S. And it's defined as uh, philosophers and priests of ancient Persia. Well, that's modern Iran. 
These were Iranians, Persians of that day. These were Arab Gentiles. They were not Jews. Uh, Arabians were called men of the East in Judges chapter 6. Arabia was called the land of the East in Genesis chapter 25. And so, first of all, these were men who feared God. Not just men who believed there is a God. There's a big difference. There's a big difference in fearing God and believing that there is a God. There are a lot of people who believe in the existence of a God, but they don't fear God. They don't conduct their lives as if they fear God. You say, how do they know that these men here in our text feared God? Well, I know that because the word of God here in our text says that they were wise men. And we know from the book of Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A person can't even begin to be wise until he has a healthy fear of God. These were not only people who believed God, they feared God. And so not only did they fear God, but uh, thirdly, they were students of the Word of God. You say, how do you know that preacher? Well, because Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 said that a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Again, you can't even begin to be wise if you will not hear, will not listen to the Word of God. We not be willing to increase learning. God said that these men were wise, one, because they feared Him, and two, because they studied Him. They were students of the Bible. They were earnest theologians. How else would they have known about that star? They didn't know the Word of God. How else would they have known what that star meant? Uh, how would they have known that that star meant that a Jewish king uh, who would one day rule over the entire earth was about to be born? I'm telling you that they were students of the Bible uh, and of Bible prophecy. It was not all that unusual to find believers in the God of Israel from Gentile nations. For example, uh, the Queen of Sheba was a strong believer. Candace, the Queen of Ethiopia, was a strong believer. The Ethiopian eunuch, Acts chapter 8, he got saved. The Lebanese king of Tyre was a strong believer. The Persian king Cyrus was a strong believer. Love Daniel, just love Daniel. Even Nebuchadnezzar, when he got saved, uh, was converted under the influence of Daniel and those three Hebrew boys. Rahab, the Gentile harlot from Jericho, was a strong believer. Ruth, the Moabitish woman, was a strong believer. On and on and on we could go around uh, uh, about those. But let me ask you a question. What is the opposite of a wise man? And the answer is a fool. Let me prove that. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools, not interested. And, and, and may I commend you by being here this morning uh, because you're willing to come. And you're willing to listen. You're willing to let the Word of God instruct you. You're wise for being in the house of God. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, especially again if your motivation for being here is to learn about Him. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. It is the essence of wisdom. And so we have number one, the wise men. Who were they? They were not oriental kings, as the song suggests. You know, we three kings of Orient are. These were not kings. How many were there? Again, the Bible doesn't say. 
We know there were more than one because the Bible says there came wise men from the east. And uh, there's an assumption that because uh, three different gifts were presented that there must have been three gift givers. Again, pure speculation. There could have been several that offered him gold and several that offered him frankincense and myrrh. Uh, number three, what were they seeking? Verse two, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Not just any king, but the eternal king, the Lord Jesus Christ, the king of kings, the promised Messiah. They wanted to know where Jesus was. Again, these men were students of the Bible. And the Old Testament is replete with promises of a coming king who would reign and rule from Jerusalem over all the earth one day, even forever. Isaiah had clearly prophesied 743 years before Jesus was born that one of their own, uh, one of their own, even a Gentile named Balaam, prophesied Numbers chapter 24, 1,500 years before the birth of Christ. He said, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star. There's a, there it is. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. A scepter is a staff held by a king as an emblem of power, royal power and authority. So that scepter spoke of a king whose birth would be signaled by an unusual star. They read that. They began to look for that star. And, uh, and then when it finally came, they were ready to seek him out. Now I say to you that truly wise men still seek him. Amen. It's not just a cute little saying on a sign uh, at Christmas time. It's an indisputable fact. Wise <laughs> men and women still seek him. They feared him. They studied about him. They sought him out. These wise men had traveled hundreds of miles across the desert. I would imagine by camel for one reason. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Some people won't travel 75 yards to, to find out where he is that is born king of the Jews. These guys traveled hundreds of miles across the hot burning desert. They said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. And what are we coming for? To worship him. They had an amazing degree of spiritual light. The whole, uh, this whole wise men scenario is really quite astonishing, but it testifies to the fact that God is always at work in the hearts of men around the globe. I submit to you that it was also very telling of the spiritual condition of the Jewish people at that particular point in history that God had to send an Arab delegation to inform them of the birth of their own Messiah. Yes, yes. Amen. Verse 3 tells us that when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. None of them were expecting him. None of them were looking for him. Not only that, that word troubled it's from the Greek word terasso. Listen to this. It means to agitate. Not only was King Herod agitated at the news, but all Jerusalem was agitated with him. Something about Jesus. He either makes you glad or he makes you sad. Amen. Amen. You either love him or you hate him. They were agitated. By the news. What's all this foolishness about another king? I'm the only king in these parts, O Herod thought. So he summons the religious authorities and demands of them where Christ should be born. 
Well, they checked the word of God, and sure enough, the answer is found in the little book of Micah, chapter 5 and verse 2. Written, he said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, quote, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the, eight, the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Wise men still seek him. But secondly this morning, fools still despise him. Notice with me, first of all, Herod's incredible arrogance, especially that was, as it was manifested in his complete disregard for the word of God. I mean, think about it, folks. He summoned the prophets. He summoned the priests. And he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said, well, let me get out of the scriptures. And they look in the scriptures and they find in Micah chapter 2 that was written some 710 years before the birth of Christ. And they said, here it is. And they read it to him. So uh, he was, Herod was so foolishly arrogant that he thought he could murder the Son of God and get away, somehow get, get away with it. Yet he believed the Bible. He was so convinced of it, of the veracity of it, that he sent a brigade to, to, uh, to Bethlehem to murder all those dozens of innocent children, two years old and under. Herod was a classic fool. Dr. C.I. Schofield wrote that a fool in Scripture is never a mentally deficient person, but rather one arrogant and self-sufficient who orders his life as if there were no God. The Bible says in Psalms 14.1 that the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Think about those words for just a moment. The fool had said where? In his heart. He may not say it out loud, but in his heart of hearts, he don't really believe there's a God. Actions speak louder than words, folks. A man don't have to say there's no God, but his actions prove that he don't believe there is because God has no part in his life. God has no, he doesn't look to God for direction. He don't look to God for anything. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14 that fools make a mock of sin. That means they don't take sin and its consequences seriously. To them it's a joke. Fools make a mock. They laugh at it. Herod's incredible arrogance a, in his complete disregard of Scripture, and then B, in his complete disregard for human life. Herod was a fool because he chose the wrong God. In not choosing to worship and serve the God of the Bible, he by default chose to worship and serve the God of this world, the devil. There is no middle ground. There is no gray area, so to speak. A person is either a follower of God or by default a follower of the devil. In John 8, 42, Jesus was talking with some religious Jews and they said, oh, we have Abraham to our father. And Jesus said, you're of your father the devil and the lust of the desires of your father. You will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, for there is no truth in him. And those same Pharisees, those same religious Jews were the ones who demanded the murder of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they were of their father, the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. Herod demanded the murder of Jesus because he was of his father, the devil. His sinful lusts were being fueled by none other than Satan himself. Therefore, 
As a result, he hated God. He disregarded God. And he was a fool. I'm telling you, wise men still seek him, but fools still despise him. How many people do we know just like that? They not, may not be as bad as Herod, but nevertheless, they disregard God and his word, and they'll end up in the same place. Herod was a fool. He despised God, and I'm telling you again, in closing this morning, wise men still seek him. There is no middle ground. A person either fears the Lord, which is the beginning, the starting place of wisdom, or they just disregard him, which is a bad and foolish decision. Brother Paul is going to come this time and lead us in a hymn of invitation and let's stand together. Wise men still see. Yeah.